सो यस वी आर लाइफ गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू प्रीवियस इयर पेपर सोल्यूशन क्लास सो इन दी टू डेज क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व टेलीकॉम गेट टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन पी वाई क्यूज ऑफ सिग्नल एंड सिस्टम लेट अस स्टार्ट विद द वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो दी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन फ्रंट ऑफ योर स्क्रीन कंसिडर दी सिग्नल एफ ऑफ टी दैट इज इक्वल टू वन प्लस टू कॉज ऑफ पाई टी प्लस थ्री साइन ऑफ टू पाई टी बाई थ्री प्लस फोर कॉज ऑफ पाई टी बाई टू प्लस पाई बाई फोर वेर टी इज इन सेकेंड्स इट्स फंडामेंटल टाइम पीरियड इन सेकेंड्स इज डैश Now this is an easy question, but not that tough question. It's easy question. Fundamental time period. Sir, we have three sinusoidal terms. Here cos, here sin, here cos. So what is the value of omega one, omega two, omega three? Sir, omega one, check it out. Cos of omega one t, so omega one is pi. Sin of omega two t, so omega two is two pi by three. Cos of omega three t plus phi. So omega three is pi by two. Once you get omega one, omega two, omega three, I guess uh, finding the fundamental time period is not that tough. Okay, I was about to give you only forty-five seconds because uh, this can be solved pretty fast. Uh, save the time from this easy question. Invest in the hard questions because in the today's class you will see absolutely hard questions from the signal and system. Okay, so let us see the solution. First point was about omega one is equal to pi. So what is the respective fundamental time period? That is equal to two pi divided by omega one. So that is equal to two pi divided by pi. So t one is equal to two. Now omega two that is equal to from the question it was two pi by three by comparison. So t two is equal to two pi divided by omega two. So two pi divided by omega two is two uh, pi by three. Two pi getting cancelled. Three is left. Uh, talking about omega three that is equal to pi by two. So now of t three that is equal to two pi divided by omega three. So two pi divided by Omega three is pi by two. Sir G pi pi getting cancelled. Four is left. Okay. So now check it out. Uh, we have to say that since t one, t two, t three is found, but we need the fundamental time period of f of t, and that is the collection of all these terms. So therefore, the final fundamental time period is equal to LCM of t one, t two, t three. So that is equal to LCM of two comma three comma four. Now two comma three comma four. If you do not know how to find LCM, let me teach you very easy. Two three four common term two. So two ones are here. Nothing common. Right as it is here. Two twos are now nothing common. So in the right angle fashion, multiply all the terms. You will get your LCM. So two into one into three into two. Sir, the answer is four into three twelve. Therefore, the answer of the LCM is twelve. Okay. Very simple. So yes, uh, this is method one to solve this question. I won't recommend this method because I feel this method is little bit lengthy. Because uh, you can solve the same question with the help of the HCF concept. Because omega one, omega two, omega three is known, so the final signal f of t will have the fundamental frequency omega that is equal to HCF of omega one, omega two, omega three. Okay, so now HCF of what term, sir? We have fractions. Uh, check it out: pi, two pi by three, and then pi by two. If you have fractions, uh, then do not worry. Then it is HCF of numerator, so pi, two pi pi, and LCM of denominator, so one three two. Okay, so now let me shift this uh, to the upper slide, and now let me ask you. Therefore, what is the final fundamental frequency, sir? Highest common factor between these three terms, it is pi. LCM of one, two, three, it is six. Okay, so you got the fundamental frequency, but they were asking about the fundamental time period. So now method two says fundamental time period can be found if uh, omega is equal to pi by six, uh, then t is equal to two pi by omega. So that is equal to two pi by pi by six. Pi pi getting cancelled. Two into six. Yes, the answer is twelve. Done and dusted. So this is how you can get the answer fast. Or otherwise, you can follow this approach also. We have two methods to solve this question. Let us move forward for the next question. So the next question in front of the screen. Check it out. Okay. So from Z transform, we have this question. Gate two thousand nineteen uh, telecommunication. It is MCQ question. First, uh, write down the important points. Let H of Z be the Z transform of a real valued discrete time signal H of n. Very important. Real valued. 
Why, sir? Ji? Because further they are saying if P of Z is equal to H of Z into H of 1 by Z has a zero at this position. Now, this nature of this zero is a complex. When you have real valued signals, then the zeros are zero or you may say real or complex conjugate complex pairs. So if we have complex number, then they should exist in the conjugate pairs. That is the reason I told you real valued very important note. And then uh, they are saying that P of Z has a total of four zeros, which of the following plots represents all the zeros correctly. So now finally you have to comment on which plot is giving me the answer A, B, C or D. Okay. So final 30 seconds. As you can see, inside the unit circles too, right? And then outside too like this, or else outside too like this, outside too again you can see, they are close to the unit circle, this were away from 1, this are at the position 1, 1, right? And this are inside the unit circle. So A, B, C or D, which one is correct? So the time is up. Now it's my time to solve the question. As I told you the important statements, uh, I'm going to use uh, those statements to get the answer. The first point is P of Z. They are asking the plot of P of Z. P of Z is made from H of Z and H of 1 by Z. So basically zeros of P of Z is equal to, if you need zeros of this term, this is equal to zeros of this term, right or wrong? Yes, Sarji. So zeros of P of Z is basically equal to zeros of H of Z and h of 1 by z now my task is to find the zeros of this players how to get that to get that you have to check about the h of n nature they were saying h of n is real valued signal so when we have real valued signal then the zeros and poles both are real or complex conjugate pairs right so now here we will say that uh, therefore since we had the complex uh, given in the data so they should exist in the complex conjugate so zeros are complex conjugate pair okay so now uh, finally i will say that if h of z has zeros z1 as given in the data, then Z1 star should also exist. Similarly, H of 1 by Z, like in the above. If Z is the term, Z1 is the 0. So 1 by Z is the term, then 1 by Z1 is the 0. And it's a conjugate pair, 1 by Z1 conjugate. These are the zeros of this term. So finally, I will say that in the question, they are giving us uh, there is a zero at half plus half J. So I will say as per the given data, okay, if you need the zeros of P of Z, there are in total four zeros. The first zero is at half plus J by two. This was given. This is given. Now, as per our concept, Z1 star is also a zero right and 1 by z1 is also 0 1 by z1 star is also 0 so now three zeros will find by using the simple concept of conjugate conjugate means uh, the imaginary part change its sign real part doesn't change its sign 1 upon z1 is equal to 1 upon half plus j by 2 so multiplying with the rationalized term half minus j by 2 here half minus j by 2 now this is like a plus b into a minus b which is a square minus b square numerator part is half minus j by 2 denominator is like a square minus b square so half square is 4 and then a minus uh, j by 2 the whole square please check it out this is minus j square by 4 j square is iota right like j is iota so j square would be negative 1. If j square is negative 1, outside we have negative, overall numerator is positive 1 and denominator is 4. So finally, I will say here we have positive 1 by 4. Okay, so now solving this is half. Half is getting cancelled from numerator and denominator everywhere and we are getting 1 minus j as the answer. Okay, so therefore, if 1 by z1 is 1 minus j, 1 by z1 conjugate would be what? Sir, imaginary part will change its sign. So 1 plus j is the answer. So we got the four zeros. 
वन टू थ्री फोर वी गॉट दी फोर जीरोज एंड देर फोर इफ यू ट्राई टू प्लॉट दिस इफ यू ट्राई टू प्लॉट दिस वॉट आर दी पोजिशन यू विल गेट लेट मी ड्रॉ लेट मी ड्रॉ दी जेड प्लेन दिस इज द रियल एक्सेस रियल ऑफ जेड दिस इज द इमेजनरी ऑफ जेड देन वी हैव यूनिट सर्कल unit circle which is mod z that is equal to 1 so this is the position of uh, j right so this is j this is minus j this is real 1 this is minus 1 if i check my zeros then we have half comma half right in the real part half in the imaginary part half so half comma half is somewhere here zero is represented like this okay this is half comma half and then we have one more term half comma minus half so half comma minus half in the real half in imaginary minus half so this is the position right then we have one more zero which is at 1 minus j which is 1 comma minus 1 in real we have one in the imaginary minus 1 which means j right so this is the position and then 1 minus j this is the position right this is the position so this is our answer now exactly this shape we can see in 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 delhi so delhi is the correct answer other options are wrong check it out so basically here we do not have uh, 1 plus j so therefore this is wrong here we do not have uh, this uh, okay in our answer we do not have this as the zero because minus 2 was not there so it's wrong here uh, if you see they are saying 2 plus 2j we have zero at this position no we do not have we have zero at 1 plus j as per our calculation check it out okay so yes finally we had uh, delhi as the correct answer and i guess this is also easy two concepts you have to understand p of z is related with this term so we have to focus on this term therefore we focused on h of n it was real so zeros are complex conjugate pair and then it was easy to get the answer now moving forward for the next question not all the questions are that much easy because uh, now you will see toughness in the problems see how the big problem is 2009 telecommunication your time starts now it is desired to find a three tap causal filter which gives a zero signal as an output to an input of the form x of n that is equal to c1 e to the power minus j pi n by 2 plus c2 e to the power j pi n by 2 where c1 and c2 are arbitrary real numbers this desired three tap filter is given by h of 0 that is equal to 1 h of 1 that is equal to a h of 2 that is equal to b and h of n that is equal to 0 for n is less than 0 or n is greater than 2 okay What are the values of the filter tabs A and B if the output is y of n that is equal to zero for all n, where x of n is as given above, but here we have below as the structure. So you can see the structure. The structure is x of n is the input, y of n is zero always. Now this h of n is like this. At n is equal to zero, it is one. At n is equal to one, it is a. So on and so forth. So what do you feel? When will be our output zero? What should be the values of a and b such that always you get y of n zero? Okay, so the time is up. Let us see the solution now. First point to note down is a lot of students after seeing this question, what comes in their head? Convolution. Sir, input is given, h of n is given, output is zero. Sir, convolution formula will use to get the answer correct, but it is time taking method. i am not saying that it is wrong it is method 1 to solve the question but then we have a faster approach as well so method 1 i know that you are solving but now let us see the method 2 so in the method 2 the concept is please write it down because a lot of students uh, do not study the concepts properly this is the system we are giving input x of n we are getting output y of n and here we have h of n so basically you are saying that h of n uh, sir ji uh, it's uh, time domain signal x of n time domain y of n time domain therefore y of n is equal to x of n convert with h of n and so on and so forth but what i am telling here is in the method 2 h of n is a time domain signal but its fourier transform would be a frequency domain signal and it would look like a capital h of e to the power j omega our input is also of this format complex exponential format which is let us say e to the power j omega not n a specific frequency 
as per our question we can see here what is omega naught minus pi by 2 here what is omega naught pi by 2 right so specific frequency so now when input is passed to the system what we get as the output now is concept says this is x of n into yes you are seeing correctly because uh, this is time domain but this is frequency domain so x of n into capital H of e to the power j omega is changed to omega naught this is the concept by this concept you can solve this question pretty fast because now the question says we want output always zero if you want y of n zero if you note if you need y of n is equal to zero therefore this implies this thing should be equal to zero okay h of n into capital h of e to the power j omega naught should be equal to zero now check it out carefully that x of n is the input which is not zero obviously but this capital h of e to the power j omega naught it is made from two things magnitude and phase right so i will write in this way x of n into magnitude is mod h of e to the power j omega naught and the phase is let us say e to the power j theta okay so phase into magnitude now if i ask you how will be lhs equal to rhs to make sure that lhs is rhs this thing we know that they are not equal to zero complex exponential players they are not equal to zero so obviously this thing should be equal to zero because this thing will be some constant a if this thing is zero then a into zero then we can say the answer is zero correct so these are the complex exponential we cannot be which cannot be zero and this can be made zero so now our focus is to make the magnitude of h of e to the power j omega naught zero i hope you understood the concept very simple concept okay so now let us move forward for the steps the first step is h of n that is given as 1 a b where this is the origin at n is equal to zero h of n is one so if i use the z transform using the z transform i can say h of z is equal to